Greetings from uh, the Division of Vascular and Endovascular Surgery, Medanta, the Medicity Hospital. My name is Dr. Tarun Grover. I am the Director of Vascular and Endovascular Sciences here. And I've been here for the last 10 years and uh, working as a Director for the Division. because uh, most of the times when people they have pain in their legs they either consult an orthopedic surgeon or they go to their general physician they are not able to find out the exact cause why they are having this pain so to start with i would like to tell everyone that uh, normally when we talk about vascular surgery we have two types of blood vessels in our body normally the arteries and the veins and the main problem when the arteries get occluded patients they start having pain when they walk because that is uh, i would say a uh, mismatch between demand and supply. When we walk, the demand for the blood supply increases and if the patient they have some occlusions which could be because of various reasons in the blood vessels, so they have a mismatch, the demand is not being able to meet, so all these patients they develop pain in their legs and for this it has to be evaluated by using a duplex scan which is normally called a color doctor for the arteries. The venous problems on the other end are the common problems when the blood is not able to return back from their legs to their heart and usually these patients either they develop varicose veins or they have swelling in their legs and uh, which becomes very cumbersome to treat because these people they feel very heavy in the evening and they feel very tired very early after standing for a long duration. So usually these are the venous symptoms these patients they have. So as you understand that uh, we have been moving towards minimally invasive procedures. So similarly what's happening is that uh, most of these surgical interventions have been brought down to keyhole surgeries or robotic surgeries. And for us vascular interventions have been advanced to endovascular which means everybody is aware of coronary artery stenting which means when we put stents in the coronary vessels or the vessels of the heart. Similarly now we don't require to do bypasses. There are a lot of advanced uh, techniques which are available. We can open these arteries with endovascular maneuvers, which means we don't make any cuts. We can do atherectomies, which means we can take out the plaques which are causing occlusion to these vessels. We can do stenting for these vessels and there are laser, there are radio frequency, there are various ways to tackle these occlusions. And when we combine a small surgery with these procedures, then we call it an hybrid. The, I would say the highlight of this procedure is to bring down the morbidity of these patients because if these patients are subjected to large incisions, they have to stay long duration in the hospital, they need to stay in the ICU. But once we subject them to hybrid procedure, the incisions, length of the incision is almost reduced to negligible levels, which means an incision would run into 10 to 15 centimeters, is almost brought down to 2 centimeters in size. And uh, I would be very proud to tell all of you that uh, we were the first one to have the most advanced hybrid lab in the country and the closest lab to ours is in Singapore. So we only have this and this is called the Artis Ego lab, which is a very advanced lab and we are able to do all procedure in this lab. Even a Dyna CT, which means a CT scan for the patient, the angiogram, the open surgery, everything can be combined in the same theater. So it's a very interesting topic as well as an interested arena where uh, I would say these uh, young females who used to have large fibroids and uh, if they were subjected to open surgery then sometimes these young ladies were not able to conceive which means they were not able to get uh, pregnant. So with these uh, procedures when we talk about uterine artery embolization which means that we by endovascular means without making any cuts, angiographically what we do is we occlude the blood supply to these fibroids. So over a period of time these fibroids they shrink which means you remove the fibroid in a non-surgical way. We don't make any surgery, we don't do any make any cuts and the fibroids are reduced in size. And um, I would really like to address this in Hindi also because sometimes some ladies they don't understand this. So, जो हमारे बड़े fibroids होते हैं, जब हम उनको surgery करके निकालते थे, उससे क्या फर्क पड़ता था कि उससे काफी ज़्यादा scarring होती थी। जैसे कोई भी जख्म बनता है, वो surgical जख्म के कारण जो disfigurement या जो shape uterus का खराब हो जाता था, उसके कारण उनको conception में या दोबारा गर्भवती होने में problem हो सकती थी। खासकर वो ladies जो young हैं, जिन्होंने अभी अपनी family life complete नहीं करी है, 
और उनको अगर लार्ज फाइब्रॉइड लें तो इस तरह की जो टेक्निक है उससे ये एडवांटेज है कि वो अपनी यूट्रस की जो फंक्शनैलिटी है जो काम है उसको मेनटेन रख सकते हैं और ये बहुत ही सक्सेसफुल तरीका हो गया है एंड अब वी हार्डली रिमेंबर कि अगर हमें कोई बड़े फाइब्रॉइड्स के लिए हमें सर्जरी करने की जरूरत पड़ी हो बिकॉज दिस प्रोसीजर कैन इवन बी डन अंडर लोकल एनेस्थीजिया मतलब पेशेंट को हमें बेहोश करने की आवश्यकता भी नहीं है उसको बिना बेहोश किए एक पेशेंट को सिर्फ लोकल एनेस्थीजिया देके ये काम कर सकते हैं पेशेंट को मैक्सिमम चौबीस से अड़तालीस घंटे हॉस्पिटल में रुकना पड़ता है पोस्ट प्रोसीजर काम करने के बाद थोड़ा दर्द जरूर रहता है जिसके लिए अब हमारे पास बहुत अच्छी दवाइयां हैं जो हम दर्द को कंट्रोल कर सकते हैं और ये ट्यूमर या ये फाइब्रॉइड्स बिल्कुल श्रिंक होके ऑलमोस्ट नेग्लिजिबल साइज या खत्म भी हो जाते हैं also another very interesting area because what happens is that usually any symptoms or any problem a patient has usually they will have a pain pain is a protective sensation which means if you hurt yourself either you put your hand over the wire you will have pain so now with diabetes these patients they develop neuropathy which means they become insensate unko kisi bhi cheez ka dard ka garam ka thande ka ehsaas khatam ho jata hai disease itni advanced ho jati hai kai baar ki mareez jab tak doctor ke paas apni takleef leke aata hai tab itni der ho gayi hoti hai ki kai baar hame jaise uske pair mein koi zakham hai to usko dard ka ehsaas nahi hoega zakham itna phail jayega aur disease itni bad jayegi ki jab wo hamare paas aate hain kitna bhi hum koshish kare kai baar hum pair nahi bacha sakte तो इसके लिए जो भी डायबिटिक पेशेंट्स होते हैं ऑल दोज पेशेंट्स हुआ सफरिंग फ्रॉम डायबिटीज दे मस्ट हैव अ रेगुलर इवेल्युएशन ऑफ देयर फीट एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इज प्रिवेंशन वी नेवर पे अटेंशन टू प्रिवेंशन बट वी हैव ऑलवेज बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट प्रिवेंशन इज बेटर देन क्योर सो दैट स्टेटमेंट आई वुड डोंट थिंक सो इट इज स्टैंड्स मोर ट्रू स्पेशली फॉर डायबिटिक पेशेंट्स बिकॉज़ इफ दे स्पेंड सम मनी और सम रिसोर्सेस इन प्रिवेंटिव मेडिसिन स्पेशली फॉर डायबिटिक फूड दैट इज द मोस्ट एसेंशियल they should have a proper footwear which should not be tight we should not have a patient should not suffer from a shoe bite they should have a regular care of their toes because most of the time their toe nails they develop fungal infection which eventually leads to lot of infection in the toe uh, foot toes and they end up losing their uh, toes because of gangrene and other area is lot of patients they develop callosities callosities are hard surfaces which in a common layman language we talk about that these are corns over the plantar surface which is the area which bears the weight from on the foot so this is because of faulty weight distribution and now in medanta we do have customized insoles available which help to offload these uh, patients uh, foot so that when they walk on these specialized made insoles which is made by a 3d printer after taking a foot impression of these patients so these are very preventive i would say basic things which these people can do before sleeping they should always evaluate their feet that they are not having any bruises or any cuts or any small wounds they should whenever they go to their physician who is taking care of their diabetes they must get their pulses evaluated if their pulses are good nicely palpable which means they are not suffering from any vascular insufficiency so these small things are have to be kept in mind so that these people don't develop foot ulcers I would say that the the reason for increase in vascular disease is not different from the reason for increase in other diseases also. I would say it's mostly lifestyle related. The stress is increasing. People are giving less uh, time to take care of themselves. Their dietary habits are going haywire. They don't take care of their health. They don't go for regular health checkups. And uh, because of I would say faulty diet and uh, not a good lifestyle which means we don't incorporate any sort of an exercise and then sub and uh, exposure to most of the extrinsic risk factors in the form of alcohol smoking these things are contributing to increase in vascular diseases and uh, especially diabetes has become uh, very very rampant in our country and uh, we are almost considered as the diabetic capital of the world and uh, unless until we take care of ourselves we reform our lifestyles i think uh, not for vascular but for most of the diseases you know recently we were hearing that uh, a 14 year or a 15 year old guy had uh, mi so which means these things were almost unheard of 
young girls are developing breast cancer so th these are all lifestyle related because there are so much of uh, pollution do have to have a, has a major role to play in this there is contaminants in the food so we have to be careful of all these things and uh, i would say a healthy lifestyle which incorporates some amount of exercise regular health checkups is the most important thing to the, or the way forward to prevent ourselves from these problems